Welcome back to the channel. Um, we got something new, fun, and exciting here for you. Audi brought a new car into its lineup to compete with the Porsche Taycan and the Tesla Model X. We got the all new 2022 Audi e-tron GT. We got one of the first ones here in Houston, Texas at Audi West Houston. Um, let's take a look and see what this car is all about. Come with me. First thing that we're going to be looking at is this style. This car is going to be built on the same platform as the Porsche Taycan, in the, which is in the same VW family, except I like to think it has a little bit more line that gives it a sportier look to it. So let's go ahead and see how these cars are going to be pretty similar yet different. And what Audi is known for is this is going to be its headlight and its headlights. I mean, when you look at it, it's going to give you that nice aggressive look to it um, with those Matrix LED headlights. Along with that, you also do get a nice blend between this honeycomb pattern that you have here covers up some sensors under there. We do have a nice black accent with some air inlets here and some on the side there. Again, for aerodynamics, and you're gonna see later on why this car's gonna be so fast that it puts your head into the headrest. Now we're gonna be going over the, this 20 inch five spoke V design that it has on there. Of course, you do have your two-tone colorway there that Audi likes to put on their vehicles. Now you have this option. They start off at around 19 inches. This one in particular is gonna be 20, and they go up to about 21 which there is going to be another version of this e-tron which is going to be the rs e-tron gt where you're going to be getting those bigger wheels when this car's flying past you down the highway and you get this type of view to be honest i wouldn't be mad at it it looks awesome i mean you get a wide look nice aggressive lines here on the back what i love is how there up top you do get a, not only a panoramic sunroof but it comes all the way to the back that's all glass so you get a nice view inside but I mean, where it really stands out is gonna be here again with the Matrix LED tail lights. Um, you guys just saw the, the goodbye dance. You also get a welcome home dance on these tail lights, but that's gonna be where you can tell an Audi on the road. I mean, with the sequential tail lights um, and the turning signal, um, that's how you can go ahead and tell what the Audi is. When you look at this type of design, I mean, you don't really see that too often. Of course, you get the same standard safety features that you get here on the back with your parking sensors and your Audi PreSense rear. And then moving on down below, you get a nice looking gloss black diffuser there um, which again gives it a nice uh, sporty look to it uh, when we open up the trunk let's see what we got if I'm not mistaken you're looking at about 14.1 cubic feet on there as far as your storage space which isn't bad for this type of vehicle all right so let's go ahead and go inside let's take a look at the driver's cockpit of this car looks awesome in there let's take a look nice look all right, let's kind of talk about that a little bit. You know, so this car, since it was made in Germany, you know, here, us Americans, we may be a little bit bigger. So I, myself, with the mixture of this mic, you know, and a couple leg workouts, um, I'm a little sore, so it was a little tough to get in there, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, as far as the door frame, there's, it's a little bit smaller than what I'm used to, but that's okay. I'm sure for this type of car, I wouldn't mind kind of squeezing in here. But I mean, what I love when you first see, it's gonna be a little bit more driver focused compared to some of the Audis that you would see on the road. Everything's kind of tilted more towards the driver. You get a nice, uh, simple yet futuristic design to it. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the technologies in here. Now we're gonna be going over the seats here in the car. You are gonna be getting your nice fine Napa leather there, which is a nice soft material to it. You know, normally when you get this honeycomb design on your seats, you're not gonna be getting the ventilation. But in this case with the e-tron GT, you get your heated seats, your ventilated seats, and your massage function as well, which all of it's gonna be controlled right here at the bottom. You know, you have a button here for your leg extension. You do have one for the bottom, one to recline the seat. And then you have this last one here, it's gonna be for your massage function. You just press a button, a window pops up, you can select which setting you want as far as how you want it to massage you. And then you can also pick out the intensity. Not only that, but you can also tighten and loosen up the side bolsters for your legs and your back, just giving you a nice sporty feel to it. All right guys, now we're gonna be going to the door panel here of the e-tron GT. I personally love it, you know, up top, you are gonna be starting with a soft leather material. Um, right under that, you do have a nice carbon fiber accent to it, which is gonna go inwards a little bit. It gives it a nice sporty look. Now you do have the Alcantara right below that. Love having it in this area, so it doesn't burn up your arm on a hot summer day. Now you do have your aluminum finish here, door handles, so there's a nice solid feeling to it. And you do have two speakers here on the door, which gives you a total of 16 inside the car. By Bang & Olufsen, that gives you the nice sound quality. 
I followed up lastly at the bottom you do get your Audi signature beam rings this one has the e-tron GT logo down there at the bottom I think the e-tron GT is gonna be a lot more driver focused as everything is gonna be more I guess pointing towards the driver but I love these different accents I mean this is the first time that I've seen this carbon fiber here you do have your 10.1 inch display on your screen you do have your typical Audi's virtual cockpit right there in front which allows you to see your GPS navigation and tab over between your vehicle information, your radio, and your phone. Here you can see our range. We have about 198 miles left. You will get up to 238 miles in total range on the e-tron GT, which is going to be a little bit more than your first generation e-tron, but maybe a little bit less than some of its competitors. But Audi likes to display the, your normal everyday driving conditions to where you know you're going to be getting exactly those 238 miles for your range. Of course, with this screen here in front, you know, con is controlled here by the left hand side so you can tab over between the two arrows here. And then you have your different views if you want to zoom in on your speedometer and your tachometer. Right hand side is always going to be for your phone calls, your uh, voice commands, and your channels and volume. Now moving on here towards the center console, um, a nice flow between the screen and your climate control. I always love having the climate control as buttons just because in case you do get hot or cold, you can kind of get a feel for things as you're driving as opposed to having to go through a bunch of screens and get distracted. I like that Audi always likes to keep this as buttons. Down here, of course, you have your drive select, your traction control, and you do have your camera button there if you want to see that 360 camera. Now down below, the first time that Audi's done this, you have something similar in the e-tron, but this one is just a slight little movement. You know, you just pull it back with the drive, you put it in reverse like that, and you put it in drive. Now this one is gonna be pretty similar to the Porsche models. I do believe you do get a nice little rumbling growl to it whenever you put it in drive, so you're able to see that there. Now you do have your volume and, and channels and whatnot here, um, which is nice. Uh, it's gonna be more of a touch display there. So you're able to kind of just scroll to turn up the volume and turn it down. And then down here you have a little bit more storage. Now this is gonna be your third generation Audi MMI. You know, of course you have your shortcuts here. Very simple, a lot of people compare it to having an iPhone. You know, you can tap between your home, your radio, your phone, and your navigation. And then of course, just like the other models, if you do want to put an address in there, you can just write it out. It'll recognize it. And then essentially it's gonna give you you click on one and it's going to be your turn by turn directions here this one because it's a prestige trim you are going to be getting the heads up display right there in front of the windshield so if i let's say for example want to make sure that this is in front i'll tap over to my map minimize that so i can see the full view there let's zoom in a little bit and then of course i'm going to get my turn, turn by turn directions there on the windshield which is going to be right in front i always use this for my radio and i'm set to go on the trip all right guys, so this is gonna be how you charge up the vehicle. You get a nice little door here on the left-hand side. You just have to push it maybe one, two times, maybe give it a nice little elbow real quick. Yep, still kind of brand new, you gotta break it in. But pretty simple, nice little charge there. All you have to do is just press a button, start it up, plug it in. And then here you can kind of get a gauge as to what those symbols mean. Just like I, how I was saying earlier, um, the e-tron GT is gonna be in the same family as some of our competitors, which is gonna be the Porsche Taycan. I just had an idea. Why don't we go visit them and see and have a little family reunion and see what, what what's pretty similar and what's different about these cars? Let's go take a look. Um, we already took a look at the Audi e-tron GT. We're gonna look at his cousin here, the Porsche Taycan. We're gonna see how close they are to each other. Let's go and take a look. What I'm seeing here, they're pretty similar cars. It, it, the way, best way to look at it is same person, just have different outfits on. Obviously on this one, I love the look on the Taycan, don't get me wrong. It looks super aerodynamic, very sharp lines, and also some curves there around the headlight, which is what you know Porsche is known for. It gives me a lot of 911 uh, vibes, you know what I mean? Very similar to it, yet it's gonna be a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and pretty low to the ground. Just giving you that Porsche ride that it's known for. Uh, so yeah, guys, as you can see, you do have your 21-inch wheels here. You get a nice five-spoke design with a two-tone color there. Looks really good next to the white brake caliper there, which do get cooled down. As you can see, Porsche's aerodynamics there with that vent scoop there. The air is gonna flow all the way here cool down the tire and it's eventually gonna exit this way that way. With these cars, especially giving you the instant torque that you would get with an electric car, super important, you wanna make sure everything stays cool. Not only the wheels, but also the battery as well. But where you're gonna be able to tell the differences between the two is gonna be from the back end. Personally on this one, my first impressions when I look at this back end, 
is you do get a futuristic vibe to it. It's very simple, modern, minimalistic, yet you still get a nice little, like I said, that futuristic feel here. I mean, you get some nice lines there and it's kind of hitting there. You get Porsche. And of course this one, because it's a 4S model, you do get that emblem there. Very similar to the e-tron GT. You are gonna get this glass top here, but the top, when you, whenever you sit inside, it gives you that nice open feeling to it. It does look like it's, it does darken itself out here, but overall really nice look to the car. Uh, it kind of gives you that nice two-tone color on it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Um, I hope we were able to provide a little bit more details in the comparison between the e-tron and the Taycan. Thank you, Porsche West Houston, for allowing us to go, to go in and take a look at your Porsche Taycan. Wish we could have got you some more clips on the interior, but until next time, you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.